Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to all my replay viewers. Welcome to everyone who's coming on. So thankful everyone is here. Happy to see you guys. Hello, if this is your first time with me, my name is Keely and I am the owner of lovehopeadventure.com. I talk about the marriage relationship, intimacy and marriage, um, and I also do some uh, blog posts about like normal lifestyle things, maybe some crafts, some recipes, that kind of stuff. So um, I talk about a whole lot of different things. And one of the things that I have found Periscope viewers, you guys that come on here and interact with me on the scopes, is that you guys want me to give you maybe some more motivational type topics. And I think that is so helpful. Um, there's a, like a wide variety of things that we need in our life to have a good, healthy marriage. So the thing of it is, is that healthy people make healthy marriages. And when you are insecure, when you feel like you don't have the confidence, when you have poor body image or poor or low self-esteem, it causes you to have a lot of issues in your relationships, particularly those of your, um, hi, so glad you're here, Auburn Mama. Um, I'm in North Carolina too, so um, nice, nice states. But uh, so what I find is that when you do not have a good, you know, self-worth or good image of yourself or whatever, and you lack confidence, it breeds all kinds of other things. So insecurities bring je breed jealousy. Um, it also causes you to feel hurt a lot of times about things, taking things very personally. Um, lack of confidence can keep you from doing so much. It can keep you from going out on a limb with your sex life. It can keep you from uh, diving deeper in your relationship with your spouse because you don't have the confidence. Uh, so really, not, not feeling that you can do something affects you everywhere. It's not just in your day-to-day -day life and the choices you make. It also affects your relationships. So uh, part of my goal is to help people to feel confident, to feel um, you know secure in who they are, feel good about themselves so that they can be a healthier person and have healthier relationships. So when you're dealing with insecurities, it really causes you to struggle in your marriage because um, you know suddenly you think that the other person is out to get you or maybe you think that um, you just can't do things or you're not good enough and then you kind of project some of that stuff onto your spouse. So when your spouse comes in the door and you have been feeling all day long that you're not good enough and you're not doing enough and they come in and ask you very you know, unaccusatory, hey, what's for dinner? And then you just like rain fire on them. Wait a minute, isn't it good enough that I cooked your supper every day this week or whatever, right? So they can come in and they just say these tiny little things. And because you're already feeling bad about yourself, you just take it as an attack. I do the same thing. So this is not me pointing fingers at people. I do the same thing. It's like, you know, I do the laundry around here. That's one of the things that's that's one of my biggest chores and the kids and I tend to do a lot of it and if my husband were to come in and say hey I'm out of underwear if I was already feeling insecure that day and he told me about his lack of socks I mean I would just feel so personally attacked right it's like you're telling me it's not good enough because look at all the clothes in your you know drawer but you're out of socks you know and I'm not good enough I can't do this so that's, you know, that's sort of the practical aspect of it, right? When we are dealing with insecurities and we don't feel like we can do it and we don't feel like we're good enough, all these very minor things become big things. And it's not like your spouse meant to come in the door and make you feel that way. You were already feeling that way. And then they say something that you just sort of projected onto them. So then you give that negativity a real voice. Instead of it just being something in your mind, you give that negativity onto your spouse and you say, well, my spouse doesn't think I can do anything. You know, they, they, they don't think I'm doing a good enough job around here. And they may not even been communicating that to you whatsoever, but you were already dealing with those insecurities and those struggles. And so you're projecting that inside voice onto other people. I think we do this way too often, and it's not just with our spouse. Um, it can be with other people that come to us too. Um, so for me, 
Today, um, I have been looking at some comments on a thread. Um, you get really sensitive when you're tired. Yeah, me too. I think all of us are like that. Well, we're tired, we're hungry, we're sick. I have not felt well for like a week. I've got all this allergy drainage and I can, it's, it's affecting me, I can tell. Um, and even right now, my throat is really killing me. So I can tell that I am a little bit more sensitive to things because of that, because physically I don't feel well. So this morning I was looking at a Facebook thread. I'm part of a business group and I told you guys I'm going to go to a business conference in May. And bef like as a precursor to that conference, they've started a Facebook group for the attendees. And I have gotten to be a part of that group. And um, this morning, Yes, I'm still scoping. <laughs> um, by the way, if you guys were with me yesterday, my scope completely tanked and my phone, oh my goodness, I had to factory reset it last night while well, my husband did because I'm not smart enough to do that. So if you were watching my scope yesterday, I am so sorry. It cut off and I was not able to finish what I had to say and I could not use my phone the rest of the day. It just <clears throat> crashed completely. And I have had to reset everything today and re-sign into everything. And who can remember passwords, right? How frustrating to me. And I'm not a tech person. So when my phone goes down, I'm like, here, I give it to my husband. Like, I am too dumb to deal with this. So uh, anyway, so if you guys were catching me yesterday, yeah, it suddenly went off. And I couldn't come back on and tell anybody what happened. So um, I did tweet it out. And, um, and I don't know if it was Periscope, it was my phone. I couldn't text, I couldn't get Facebook messages, nothing was working, it was my phone. So Periscope sometimes does have some glitches and we just deal with it because it's a free thing and nobody pays for it. So we're excited that it's even available, right? So uh, as far as like me going to the business conference, I've been reading this morning a lot of uh, comments of, uh, the question was posed, okay, what is your biggest struggle Currently in your business let's get it out there and everyone can start looking at what other people's biggest struggle is and I will tell you that 50% of the people said that lack of confidence is their biggest struggle they just lack the confidence to take that next step they are so scared that they are going to fail they are worried that if they take a step in this direction that it's gonna fall on its face and hey don't we all feel that way don't we all feel like we might take a step in a direction and it fails. And some people are completely paralyzed by that. Maybe some more than others, uh, depending on your personality. Um, I do not worry as much. I know mistakes are gonna happen. I know I'm gonna fail. I'm not happy when I fail, okay? I'm not like, yay, I failed. Um, and it can put me in a down mood. But in general, I don't shy away from doing stuff because I'm worried I'm gonna fail about it. Yeah, I am worried I'm gonna fail, but I just feel like I should at least give it a shot, you know, at least try. And um, so, but some people really struggle so much with that, that they are insecure to the point that they don't ever even try because, well, what if I fail? What if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't work? And, and here's what I have to say to you. Uh, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna fail. Um, maybe you'll, maybe you'll make the biggest mistake on the planet. I don't know, but really in all actuality, you have to ask yourself this. What is the worst mistake I can make right now? And I think you should write that down. Okay. So whatever you're faced with today, I don't know what you're getting faced with today, but whatever that thing is that you're feeling not confident about doing, okay. I don't feel confident about I don't know like okay so personally I have a really big project coming up right um I have to organize a team of people we're we're trying to upload 900 articles into a website and that is a very large project and we have a very short time limit to get it done in and so it's big and it's intimidating and part of me is like well what if we can't meet the deadline but the other part of me knows we just have to do it we just have to try we're all gonna come together, we're gonna give it our all, and either we're gonna succeed at it or we're not. And what's the worst could happen in the situation? Well, we could not reach the deadline, and maybe the client will take us off the project. I don't think he will, 
But what's the worst that can happen? We lose the project. I mean, worst case scenario, we lose one guy. We didn't meet the deadline. We're a few days late. I don't really see that as a big thing to keep me from trying. So think about, okay, what is the worst case scenario? Because when you do that, you also start developing a plan in your mind. Well, what would I do if this worst case scenario were to happen? And I think a lot of times we realize it's really not as big a deal as we made it out to be. Um, so I, that's a good way for you to kind of like get that courage to get going and to get started. Just think of the worst case thing that could possibly happen. Let your mind go crazy with it. Write it down. Write down your fears. And you might find that it is still doable. That if you were to fail, it's still worth it to try. And maybe you won't fail completely. Or maybe you won't fail at all. Or maybe things will turn out 100% different than you could have ever imagined. And look, I get it. When you're in the business world and you've got a lot riding on you and your family and their um, uh, you know, ability to live is on your shoulders because if you don't do it right and you mess up and you make financial mistakes, there is a lot of pressure. But guys, we have to trust that the Lord is going to take care of us. You give it your all, but honestly, it's in God's hands. And the Bible tells us that a man decides the way in which he's going to go, but God directs his steps. So every decision that we're making and we're just doing it, God is directing us. He's putting different things in our path. Okay, so we're going to go this way because this door closed and this one opened. Who do you think's closing and opening the doors, right? It's God, and he is guiding us and leading us to the place where we need to be. And maybe you need to fail. Maybe you need to fail really, really, really big. Maybe you need to let everybody in your life down. Maybe you do. So that God can take you to the place he needs you to be next. The good thing about God, the best thing, is that he extends grace to us. And that every day is a new morning with him. And even when we have failed miserably, and we have hurt everybody in the world around us and destroyed so much, there's always redemption in him. Always. There's always a second chance in God. Now, today, you may not be dealing with an issue that is that huge, that the mistake could be that big and catastrophic that everyone in your whole life gets hurt from it. All right? But again, it could be something little that you're just choosing not to do because you're scared or you're insecure or you're worried. Remember, there's always grace. There's always a do-over. There's always a second chance. I'm not saying that things will be the same as they were before, okay? Because there are pivotal decisions that we make in our life that really just change the course of where we were headed. And you know what? That's okay because, like I said, God is directing our steps to where we need to go. And this seemingly insignificant little thing that you are choosing not to do because of insecurities might be the very thing you've got to do so that God can lead you to the next step of the game. So keep that in mind today. I just want to encourage you that whatever it is, you can do it. Start with that mindset. I can do this. And maybe you won't. And if you don't, that's okay. Try again. Do something different. Say, this didn't work. Now we're going to do something different today. Um, and that's okay. It's okay to start out on a path and realize halfway through that it's not working and you need to choose another path. That's, that's fine. Do that. But don't ever not get started. Don't get stuck in the research phase. I'm not very big on research, guys. I'm really not. I'm just sort of the, hey, I'm going to get started and we'll figure it out from here kind of person. <laughs> and I probably should do a little bit more research before I get in too deep. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think that a lot of people, you got to have that balance. you got to do some research and then you just have to go do it. Because there are some things that you absolutely cannot learn from other people. You just have to learn it by experience. You just have to get out and do it. And um, I started, uh, I am a freelance writer. I started this two and a half years ago. And I put gigs on Fiverr.com. 
um, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even think anyone would ever buy the gig because I had tried so many other online outlets before and nothing ever worked. I wrote for Yahoo Voices. I um, tried to do a bunch of surveys. I never qualified for anything. I tried to find other freelance work. I think I signed up for Odesk and maybe one other one. And I couldn't ever figure out those platforms. So I put a gig on Fiverr. I had no idea what I was doing. Just did it. And guess what? People started ordering it. They ordered so much, they became overwhelmed because of the amount of work I was getting. And so I didn't know what I was doing. And it's been a very long, hard road. And every couple of months, I hit another like hurdle. It's like, here's a brick wall, and I've got to figure out how to get over it. But what's the alternative? Just stop? Just quit? Stop investing in that thing that I have been doing for so long because I hit a wall? No. Figure out how to get over the wall. Push past it. So I encourage you guys today with whatever you're dealing with that you'll do that. Whether it's something in your marriage, maybe it's a relationship issue, maybe you're struggling with something with your children, you're worried about a work decision, um, whatever it is. Just really pray about it and, and get going. Get your butt off the seat and go and do it. And um, I kind of have this thing that I do, and I know not everyone can do this like I am, but um, I see, I think a lot of people think that those that are doing things are completely fearless. They're not. They are afraid. They are scared, but they're just, they're just doing it anyway. They're just saying, I'm not going to let this stop me. And when I was growing up, we had these chin-up bars in my backyard, and one of them was very high, and my dad had these old reels. Uh, they were used for electrical wire, and so they were these big old reels, and we could stand on them and jump onto the uh, rails. And I'm a short person, and I would always feel a little bit scared about doing this. I loved jumping onto it, though, but it scared me to death every single time that I jumped until I reached the bar. And I would stand on that reel, and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it would take me a while to get my courage up, but I continually forced myself to do it. And I, eventually I would just be like, all right, on three, I'm going to jump. One, two, three, jump. And whenever I hit something in my life now, I say that to myself in my mind. All right, one, two, three, jump. Because I know the second I get off of the platform, I'm going to be fine. And I'm, e I'm either going to love the uh, what happens or I'm going to fall. And if I fall, well, okay, it was like like, I don't know, six feet? Not even. Like, I mean, it's like, goodness, those reels were probably three feet tall. Why was I so worried about falling on the ground, right? Three feet or whatever it was. So um, that's what I do in my mind. I mentally have to say that. One, two, three, jump. I say that on anything that I have a block on. And I just say, I'm going to start doing it. And even if it means I'm going to make mistakes, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to do it. And we're going to see where it goes from there. So uh, I think that you should definitely do something. Just go. Take a risk. It's okay. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You're right. Big moves can scare you, but just do it. Just take that risk. Go. I mean, obviously you don't want to be completely, you know, I don't know, unresponsive, uh, ir irresponsible rather. I don't want you to be like, okay, well, I'm going to drop everything and move my whole family to another state without any jobs or money or whatever. If you're doing that, please do it with the Lord, all right? Do it with his direct, because I, I mean, I, we've done some crazy things in our life. We've made some crazy decisions that have, I've been like, all right, God, how are you going to do this now? But we've always done it with his direction. So um, especially if you know God is leading you to do something, do it. Just do it. Uh, have that faith that he is going to take care of you. I mean, if it's something you're kind of like, well, I don't know if God wants me to do this or not, just start doing it, and he will let you know. He will shut those doors, and it's like, okay, well, now back to the drawing board. So um, that's what I had for you guys today as far as just get out there, do it. You can do it. I believe in you. Believe in yourself and uh, and get it done, whatever it is. So if you guys want to find out what I've been blogging about this week, go over to lovehopeadventure.com 
and you will see some of the things that have been on my mind. I should be back on tomorrow around the same time, and I hope you guys have a great day.